Welcome to the beautiful Torbalay and Lake Garda, the biggest, most family and water sport orientated of Italy's lakes for the 2019 RSX Windsurfing World Championships. Torbalay is well known among windsurfers and sailors. It is located between the shores of Lake Garda the peaks of Monte Baldo and the Piana del Sarcia Plain. The whole of the worldwide Olympic windsurfing community was focused on Northern Italy, as the 2019 RSX Windsurfing World Championships brings much interest. This highly regarded event started with a unique parade in Torbalay and a warm welcoming ceremony. Do il benvenuto a tutti quanti, a tutti gli atleti, a tutti gli organizzatori, a tutti quanti che si prodigano per questo evento che per noi è un evento eccezionale in una cornice così stupenda come il Garda Trentino, come Torbole e ormai non si abitua mai a questo, questi eventi però è, è sempre un, per noi un onore. Chiaramente colgo anche l'occasione perché devo ringraziare per questo il circolo Surf Torbole che ci mette tantissimo impegno per organizzare questi eventi che sono importantissimi anche per l'immagine nel mondo della nostra, della nostra città. More than 230 athletes gathered for the 2019 RSX Windsurfing World Championships in Circolo Surf Torbele. They were ready to fight hard in order to fulfill their goals. RSX 2019 World Championship in Torbele it's a great success to the R6 class. We have uh, the biggest uh, world championship what we ever had, 236 sailors, and which is really important and really we are proud of is that we have uh, the biggest female fleet ever. We reached the number of 100, so we have uh, 106 women racing in this, this championship. Another good uh, move from the class is that uh, it's like a pathway, strong pathway from the youth. Uh, it's a very good youth participation also here. Um, however, they are still part of overall results, but we have almost like a 50 youth sailing uh, this championship. So it's it's really, really great world championship. After the registration, a practice race was scheduled. This day was supposed to be the final test session for the competitors before racing begins in earnest for the 2019 RSX World Championships the next day. However, the weather had other plans and the race committee had to make the hard decision to skip the practice race. As the Circolo Surf Torbele Club filled up with hundreds of RSX boards, sails, masts and other equipment ahead of the World Championship, there was a growing anticipation for the week ahead and the hope for better racing conditions. Having set themselves various goals, this event represented different challenges for each sailor. Everything was ready for the first racing day of a unique RSX Windsurfing World Championships. The road to the 2020 Olympic Games of Tokyo passing through Lake Garda. So this year is rather special because it is also a qualifier for the Olympic Games. And that means that some countries will qualify to sail in Tokyo in 2020 in 10 months time. For some countries, this will also be a regatta that they use for selecting their athletes who will represent the country at the Olympic Games. So this is a very important regatta. And that means some things for us that we have to be a bit more formal at this regatta than at uh, some RSX regattas. The racing is still the same, but we have to be very careful not to give any country an advantage over another. We have to be very careful uh, that everybody has a fair regatta. It was the dawn of the first race day of the 2019 RSX World Championships. The men's fleet arrived very early to catch the morning northerly wind. The sailors were making their way into the Circolo Surf Torbele at 6.30 a.m. and were hungry to win a world title. Pierre Lecoq from France took the race win in the opening day and was two points ahead of Dutchman Kieran Badlow. 
The duo were followed by Britain's Tom Squires, another two points behind. In the women's fleet, the southerly wind started to develop early in the afternoon. The women were afloat and heading to the racecourse in a light yet gradually building breeze. Italy's Marta Maggetti was in pole position, leading by 13 points. So racing today was great. We had a lot of wind and it was really, really fun out there. A lot of people in the, in the starting line. So I'm just looking forward for the next days of racing and keep doing good. So Garda is great. This is the winter thing paradise and not having to clean your equipment after racing. It's also pretty cool. So we like that. So this is our first qualifier for the US, for the US Olympic team. So I'm just looking forward to starting up. We have two more races after this one, two more regattas. So just keeping it going and, and see how, how well it goes. One of the most impressive things in the 2019 RSX Windsurfing World Championships was the great participation in the women's fleet. 106 women from all over the world made this competition the biggest women's fleet in the history of the RSX class. This fleet is just crazy. So many girls. I didn't expect it can be more than 80 girls, but it's over than 100. And it's really interesting and uh, really tricky races, so you just can't do any mistakes. If you do a mistake, you lose a lot. If you do a mistake on the start, you just lose your race, you can go home. It's really nice that it's a lot of young girls here and I'm, I really feel so good that Fleet is getting younger and also pretty experienced girls are here. So everyone who's sailing R6 in the world seems like they're here and I really love it. We have a really big fleet of women, uh, around 106 girls are uh, uh, registered and, and competing here and it's nearly 50% uh, uh, of the competitors, uh, of the old competitors, because the men's are uh, 130, so it's about 45% of the old competitors, which is uh, a record, I think, uh, for this class and um, it's growing a lot. Uh, there are uh, more and more girls that are uh, starting. They are really want to go dream the Olympics. And uh, the class is uh, stable since many years. So um, this helps uh, also the young girls to have a, a path to when they dream the Olympics. The second day of the 2019 RSX World Championship was crucial. For many of the 236 competitors of 47 nations, it was going to be the day where dreams could be made or broken. Why was this so important? Because with eight countries in the men's fleet seeking Olympic qualification and nine countries in the women's fleet, this day could be the day sailors may secure their country a place at the biggest party of the four-year cycle, the 2020 Tokyo Olympic Games. By the time the women had left the beach, there was a solid 15 knots, with gusts of 18 knots, perfect windsurfing conditions. At the end of the qualifying series, it was reigning world champion Lillian De Heus from the Netherlands who had the best day and had a lead of 19 points over China's Yangshu Lu. This morning we had like two races with the northerly breeze. It was really nice, like the offshore breeze. I had a really good uh, morning with the first and the second place. And uh, this afternoon we had uh, the south breeze, like the onshore breeze, and it was also a lot of fun actually. Uh, I didn't have a good start, but uh, I'm ending okay in that race, yeah. I really like this place, Torblay. It's a place where we have like good conditions, good breeze. I'm feeling good and happy and it's really fun racing with the other girls. Yeah, I start wintering here with my family, with my brothers and sisters, so it's really nice to uh, come back here in this place and uh, defend my uh, world title here.
In the men's heat, it was France's Pierre Lecoq who retained the lead, soaring into the gold fleet and achieving an impressive 1-1-2 from the day. Dutchman Kieran Badler scored an improved 4-2-1, finding himself comfortably in second place. The French sailor Pierre Lecoq was ready to dazzle in Torbellet. He snatched the bronze medal in the Rio 2016 Olympic Games and has so far dominated the men's category. This is a great time to learn more about him as he becomes more and more prominent on the sailing scene. So I started uh, sailing R6 class 12 uh, years ago. Um, I, I came from the Mistral 1 design and then the R6 uh, came for the Olympic Games, so I started R6 uh, with the youth, uh, with the 8.5. And uh, yeah, my first, um, my first championship was uh, in Weymouth in uh, 2006. I chose R6 because of it was uh, equipment for the Olympic game. I've uh, already um, I've, I've dreamed about the Olympic game for a long time and, uh, and that's why I chose R6 class. It's uh, also very exciting to, to race uh, with the same equipment. I think my best moment in my career was in uh, Rio. I won the bronze medal. In, uh, in the Olympic game and I think it was a uh, yeah, big, big memory. The three most important characteristics for a successful sailor, I would say you have to be fit, you have to be strong in every kind of conditions, I think that's the hardest thing, and you have to think very quickly. I think Era 6 is one of the most exciting uh, windsurfing class because uh, everybody has the same equipment and uh, the effort makes a difference and uh, I love it. Amongst the many experienced sailors and champions, it was easy to spot the several young and ambitious athletes who had travelled to Italy to gain experience and to brush shoulders with some of the biggest names in the class. The future is looking bright for the RSX class, who shone in Lake Garda and have generated some big expectations. Yeah, it's super nice to race against uh, the older guys. Um, sometimes it's hard to get punished for every mistake you make. Dorian and Kieran really inspire me, just the way how they train. I start training with them this year. Um, and just the approach to the competitions, to everything, what they do. There's a big fleet here, obviously, and it includes a lot of young guys. And it is so cool to see that they're just out there having fun and they're actually pretty damn good. There's a lot of young guys, but there's a few standing out. I've got to mention my Dutch uh, fellow companion, Sil Hoekstra, who has been flying every now and again and having a, having a great time. It's just great to see the new generation. Really, really cool to see them do well. The third racing day marked the beginning of the gold and silver fleet. Optimism was high and the men's fleet were up first with an early start under the normal northerly Pella wind, blowing consistently at 14 to 16 knots. With the only setback being the single general recall, the race committee seemed to plough through the three races for the men's gold and silver fleets. The women were scheduled to start later in the day, a delay to allow the predicted southerly aura to develop before racing could begin. However, the aura had other intentions. The soft southerly breeze that became the aura over the past two days panted gently over the lake, but never fully stabilized. By the end of the day, Kieran Badler was in the lead of the men's category and Lillian De Heus came first amongst the women. Uh, today was an early start, we got going at um, 8.30 start, so uh, we got our race done in the morning. We were super breezy, it was uh, 
Uh, tricky, it was really tricky. It was massively favoured to the right side of the course and getting there was uh, tricky. So I'm looking forward to um, claiming back some points because I didn't have such good results today. All the sailors revelled in the experience of the 2019 World Championship at Circulo Surf Torbolo. This incredible and thrilling windsurfing class never fails to deliver uniqueness and spectacle throughout every condition. The most popular windsurfing class at its very best. Aero 6 is a very unique class because you are able to race from very light wind like 4 knots to very stormy like 35. You are able to trim your sail on the water without any help and uh, it's the most popular class uh, in the women fleet uh, in, in any other class there wasn't so much girls competing here in Torbola we are having 106 girls participating I love other sex because of the exciting racing I think it's the best Olympic class it's so competitive because it's going very fast. It's because it makes me feel uh, that I'm flying. It's because it brought me the uh, world champion medal. Because we're sailing with a big fleet. For you who don't believe it out there, it actually goes pretty fast because it's really challenging. On the penultimate day of the 2019 RSX Windsurfing World Championship, everything was yet to be decided. 236 competitors from 47 nations face their last chance before the medal races to set down a marker, to climb the scoreboard, to protect their current standings, or perhaps to make a comeback after a poor start. The women were first in line to race, and with another early start, were sent off in the northerly Pella breeze. Over the past few days, it looked as though the World Championship would be sticking to the script of the Netherlands' Lillian de Heus, who is determined to retain her title. It soon became clear that China's Yongxi Lu had not read the script, sweeping in to triumphantly win her last race of the day. The two sailors swapped places, with de Heus surrendering her lead to Lu. In the men's category, it was Kirin Badler who soared into the medal race with a five-point buffer over Lecoq, who consistently held a ten-point buffer over Van Rysselberg in third place. Well, we did uh, one race uh, with uh, North Wind uh, this morning. Uh, unfortunately for myself, it was uh, not very good with a bad start and then uh, it was difficult to come back. But uh, I tried and uh, yes, we did a lot of races uh, this week with the north wind. Uh, I was expecting a little bit more uh, south wind uh, for the regatta, but uh, we had, uh, you have to deal with uh, every condition in uh, Area 6, so I tried. final day of the 2019 RSX World Championships in Torbellay, Italy, seemed to be going out with a damp fizzle. But it ended with a perfect finale, as the aura finally made an appearance just before it was time for the medal races. At the beginning of the day, the 10 male and female medal race contenders felt a mixture of emotions. This race was the last chance for some of them to earn a medal or a higher position, and the wind was the discerner of their goals. For some, not racing would help them protect the medal that was already halfway around their necks, but would be a lost opportunity for other contenders. Would the wind rush in before the deadline? So this is the last day and medal race day and we still have no win, but I would love to sail because it's world championship and we need a medal race. I would love to race also, to finish this event with a medal race and uh, to try to show my best experience in the race and do it as good as I can. The wind did it, slowly at first, but steadier and steadier it built and gradually the women's fleet were raring to go on the medal race course, battling it out in a light 8 to 10 knot breeze. 
Russia's Stefania Erfutina won the race, but Lou had done enough to maintain her first place and is the 2019 RSX World Champion. For the men's medal race, the wind had increased furthermore, and the battle would determine whether the reigning world champion could get the better of Frenchman Pierre Lecoq. Carrying on the tradition of standing on two steps of the podium at major RSX class championships, the standoff for silver and bronze had begun. I was uh, really surprised uh, for this result. Um, before I just thinking about six or five, for me I think it's good. Badler cruised through his medal race, confident and with his points already gained, and therefore was able to relax and sail quickly with ease. He finished in fifth, knowing he held the world title comfortably within his grasp. Badler and Van Rysselberg were in reverse positions at the 2018 World Championships, but these two good friends are happy to share the podium together in any position, pleased for each other, whatever the outcome. It was a tricky race because uh, all the boys were fast and everybody is trying to, trying to go for those medals. And um, yeah, there was a little bit of pressure, but in the end we were just super happy that, uh, that we got another one too for the Dutch. It was a fantastic regatta complemented by a stunning background. The 2019 RSX Windsurfing World Championship was a truly memorable event. The very best athletes were here to give everything they had. It has been a great uh, week of Olympic sailing at top level with the uh, best uh, sailor of the world. And we also s were able to organize the regatta uh, at the high standard. We had uh, oh, three days uh, regatta almost uh, every day with the wind, we were lucky. And uh, so we are very satisfied for the class that we had a large participation of, uh, of sailors from all over the world, as we have to do be uh, as an Olympic class. Uh, in particular, we are satisfied for the participation of the female. We almost have 50% of our fleet was composed by women, more than 110 almost women, which is very unique in the sailing. So we are fully complying with the Olympic Committee standard for the parity of gender. And uh, of course, uh, uh, this uh, is a good sign for the future because it means that uh, this uh, class is solid, is strong, and uh, we are also looking forward to next Olympic Games, which is only 10 months away. These World Championships were the final major event of the RSX class for 2019, with all attention now firmly focused on Tokyo 2020 and all of the remaining qualifier events, where countries can bag their tickets to the Olympic Games. The 2020 World Championships will kick off in Australia in February, one of the last true parameters of performance for the sailors before heading to Japan.
Follow the Olympic Windsurfing Class RSX for the 2024 Olympic Games.